What's going on DMG clan? Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up your R4 card that looks like this one or looks like this one and if it loads into a game called Deep Labyrinth in 2024. Also, the year doesn't matter, but let's learn some more about the R4. All right, mobile gamers, so to start off, I'm going to let you guys know that the R4 card that you see on the table right now does work in the DS, the DS Lite, the DSi, the 3DS, and the new 2DS or 3DS XL consoles, or even the new 2DS, 3DS consoles. I think there's only a 3DS variant of that one. So if you're gonna ask that question and you wanna actually jump over to the timestamp as I put timestamps in the description of this video, you can go ahead and do so to see how this actually works in all of these devices. Otherwise, let's get this thing set up. Let's get it ready to go so we can actually play some DS games and some emulation as that part I'm gonna cover in depth as well. This is for any of these two cards that I showed you at the beginning of the intro. So if it says R4 with a little time, little stamp at the top left-hand corner with a year and it says .hk and it loads into Deep Labyrinth as there's another version of this card that loads into SpongeBob, then this guide is gonna be for you. Also, this card right here is the same card, basically the same internals. It has a different type of timestamp. This one's generally found on Amazon, but it still loads into Deep Labyrinth and it says .cn. So one is from China, one is from Hong Kong, it seems, but they are both literally the same card. They both look the same on the back. The boards are a little bit different on the back, but they load into the same menu and everything. So that's gonna be what we're gonna be setting up. These cards can handle up to 512 gigabytes. I'm only gonna be using a cheap 256 gigabyte card today. This is like a fake card that I bought from AliExpress. I don't recommend these whatsoever. They work, but they're probably gonna be garbage after a certain amount of time, but they do do what they need to do for this kind of stuff. So if you wanna buy a cheaper card, go ahead and do so. So let's get started with what we need on the computer. So on the computer, you should be downloading the files in the link in the description below called R4 Deep Labyrinth Original. The reason why I named this the original is because we're just setting up the original firmware for this card. I do have a video that is for Twilight Menu, so if you wanna go check that out for these cards, then you can go ahead and do so. I will put the link in the description below. You're welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this with anybody else that wants to learn how to set up these cards in 2024 or beyond because obviously we can't go backwards in time so download this file right click on the file and click extract all i highly recommend you to extract it somewhere on your computer i'm going to just extract it into my downloads folder just like so now there's going to be a bunch of files inside of this file so just let it extract don't mess around with anything just wait for it in the meantime, you could plug in your micro SD card into your computer if you'd like to. Now, for any cards that are above 32 gigabytes, you need to format it with the tool that I'm going to be showing you here today. I'm not going to show you how to install that tool today. Maybe I'll do that in a short or something in the future, but I have that tool. It is called AOMEI Partition Manager Pro. It's a cracked version of it because the, the, the site decided that they were going to use subscriptions. So it's a tool that we're gonna be using. So this is the folders that you're gonna see if you click inside the folder. These are very important. These are all of the folders that we're gonna drag and drop onto the root of our SD card. So now you're gonna see me grab my SD card in the bottom right hand corner of the screen on my camera, and I'm gonna plug this into my computer. Now I have the little dongle that came with it, which is this little one right here, the USB 2.0. Make note of that, it only works in 2.0 adapters. Don't put it in your 3.0, it probably won't work. So I'm just gonna plug this in, make sure it's seated in there nicely so that it actually recognizes on your computer. And there it is right there. So I already have it called Smart, and you can see that the files are on there, but I'm going to format this because I just want to show you the whole process. So I'm gonna search out for that application called AOMEI, Partition Assistant Unlimited Edition. And I'm going to open it up. Now there's going to be a little menu that says, do you want to open this? Click yes. That will block out on my screen when I'm recording, but you'll be able to see that on your screen. Now here's the tool right here. Again, I'm not showing you how to 
install this tool all you have to do is turn off your internet copy and paste the key into the section where it says you need to register this product and then it'll patch the whole product and everything so what we're going to do this is my sd card right here make sure you know what your sd card is don't format your os or anything that will be bad right click on it click format partition name it whatever you want i'm going to just leave it the way it is r4 let's just do r4 original orange make sure it says fat 32 make sure the default size is 32 kilobytes click ok down the top left hand side click apply click proceed click yes wait for it to do its thing congratulations all the operations have been completed successfully now if you have a bad card or anything like that sometimes the formatting process will not work properly if you have a smaller card like an 8 gigabyte or a 32 gigabyte card make sure to check those cards first sometimes the larger cards don't format properly with fat 32 and are not readable by the uh, r4 card so it just depends on the card i highly recommend just getting like an a1 v30 card or v20 card one of the lower end r4 cards that are still good just the ones that are going to work properly so if you ever have any issues again when plugging it in it doesn't read or something that's just because the the sd card had a problem and that has happened multiple times i've seen people ask the same question why isn't it working and that's just because the the sd card could be bad that out of the way let's open up our file manager so let's close this out we don't need this anymore we're going to open up our file explorer at the bottom there it is we're going to open up another tab this tab is going to be for our R4 card. So there's nothing in our R4 card. That's the root of our SD card. Now back in our downloads folder in our first tab that says home, we're gonna go into the R4 Deep Labyrinth original. We're gonna copy all of these files. Click copy, make sure you copy all of them. Now navigate back to your R4 original, paste all of those files at the root of your SD card. Make sure all of those files when you click on your SD card are sitting right here. Now that all those files are copied, yes, you did see a little error there when it was going through the fast part there. It just was like an error with a file that you couldn't copy. So just click skip. It's not necessary. The big necessary files that you really need are the dsmenu.dat, the BIOS, the snemule, which is for SNES, the RPG file, and the GBA file. And these other folders in here have all of the emulators for their corresponding emulations. So Sega, yes, Sega, you need to change the .bin files to .gen. I put a little note there so you can read that. Same with um, your SNES, your folder path has to be the SNES ROMs folder path. This is a little configuration file that I edited myself so that you guys don't have to worry about it but it actually says right here. So if you change this ROMs path to, let's say you just want it to be SNES, then you can do that and then just save it inside of that folder. But I'm not gonna get into that kind of stuff today. I just wanna get you guys set up so you can actually game on this thing. So basically your DS games would go in here. They should show up automatically. You shouldn't have any issues with that. Your GBA games should go in here and so on and so forth. So GBC and GB, so Game Boy goes in here. You're gonna use Game Yob. And it just depends on your device. Now the DSI NDS uh, file is actually for YS menu. So don't even worry about that. Just use the regular DS one. NES is NES DS. Sega is Genesis DS. And SNES is SNES, U, SNES MU DS. A lot of these applications or emulators or homebrew emulators aren't in development anymore. But let's plug in our SD card into our R4 card for the very first time. I'm going to be using the DSI for the sake of this, just because it's easier to actually navigate in and out of the menu. I'm gonna plug my SD card right into the back there, make sure it's seated nicely, make sure that it actually is in there. And then I'm gonna plug it into my DSI. You're gonna see the little menu, Deep Labyrinth at the bottom, and then you can actually just enter it and go right into the main menu of the R4 card. As you can see, it's actually navigating to Game Yaw by default. So press B, press B again, and then this should be the main menu of your R4 card right here. So if you get to this menu, that's great as well. I might edit that so that you are actually at that menu instead of the game job, as that seemed to be an issue with some people in the past. So when you go in here, this is your menu loading up. And again, I'm just gonna press the home button. I'm gonna show you that this 
file that I copied over to this SD card. So I'm going to pull this out. This is the one that has the little uh, squiggly R4 card or 2022 year. I'm going to put that SD card. So there's no SD card in this one. I can put the SD card from this one into this one and it'll work as well. Like I said, it's the same internals and everything. It's just a different sticker on the front. And there we go. There's that menu right there. So now that we've done that, we can actually put some games on this. Again, not all games work for this. I highly recommend you to go over to the Twilight menu video if you want to play GBA games and stuff like that. GBA does work for some, but games like Pokemon Emerald, there's a patch that Twilight menu has that will allow you to play GBA games like that. Not every game works though. So this is again, emulation on this is a homebrew application that people have developed in the past and there's no active development on these right now. So some games won't work and there is a huge compatibility, compatibility list that I can put in the link in the description as well. So now I'm just gonna copy over some DS games just to show you DS games working and maybe a, an SNES game as well. All right, so I copied over just Super Mario World for SNES, and I copied over newer Super Mario Bros. DS. This is a patched game, by the way. It's a hack game. If you want to search it out, you can find it all over the internet. So it's a cool, different version of Super Mario Bros. for the DS, and it's just a modified game, basically, that somebody developed. I'm not going to do Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, NES, just for the sake of this video to be not two hours long. I'm just going to show you just SNES and DS running so that it makes sure that it'll actually work. So unplug it from your computer, plug it into your R4 card. I'm going to be using this one again today. This one is the same again. Don't worry about that. And let's plug it into our DSi. Now, again, this is trying to run DS style games on a bigger screen. So let's open up newer Super Mario Bros. DS and see it working so there it is right there and it looks pretty good on the dsi xl because it's actually formatted to the big screen and the small screen and again this is just a patch game which is really cool now to get out of this menu so if you want to go play another game you have to press the l r and all of the buttons at the same time this will exit only ds games so if you are done with your ds game and you want to get out of that menu you press the l the r and all of the buttons make sure your buttons all work and you'll be able to go back into the R4 menu. Press the B button. Now we're going to go down to SNES ROMs. I'm going to open up SNES MU, which is the actual emulator for this. And we're going to navigate inside there. Now my ROMs are going to load up here after it initializes inside of a little menu. As you can see here, we can select the ROM. Now when we select this ROM, some games need to be configured differently. I like to just leave it the way it is because on the most part, it looks okay to me. And yes, there's going to be some graphical issues, but this one looks good to me. See, as you can see, it's kind of squished and stuff. But honestly, for playing SNES on a little screen like this, and even like it's missing textures and stuff, like that should be a bigger menu. But the game is actually really fun to actually be able to play. There's certain games that don't look good at all, like Donkey Kong Country sometimes has graphical issues throughout the whole thing. Whereas like there's a little graphical issue right there where you can see a little square at the top there but honestly that doesn't bug me if i want to play some you know super snes or super mario worlds on super nintendo it plays really well like it just doesn't crash or anything i played through all the way up until like the second area of the game and it just plays really well so this is super nintendo and if you want to check out the timestamps for what this r4 card works on as you can see it's i'm missing my little uh <laughs> my little guy up there you can change things in your options here so if you go to like screen layout you want to change this to like squish more normal um you can change all that no scaling there we go there's no scaling right there that probably looks a little bit better but some games or some worlds or some areas might not look the best and let's see if we go yeah a little bit squishy middle this doesn't really touch anything full screen. Oh, there we go. There's full screen. That's full screen working for you. And it actually doesn't look too bad on the DSI. Actually, <laughs> let's see what it looks like when we get out into the game. No, that looks pretty good. So that's not too bad. And even on your DS and your DS Lite, it'll probably look too not too bad. Whereas the 3DS, it might look a little bit weird to some people. But being able to play Super Nintendo, a lot of the, the big games, at least, is actually a pretty cool option for an R4 card. 
that's about it for setting up your R4 card for 2024 and beyond because I think this is actually just going to be the last R4 card guide that I do for a while as I have a whole bunch of other R4 card guides and this I think is going to be the ultimate one. All right, so this R4 card does work in the DS. It works in the DS Lite. If you watch the guide, it does work in the DSi, as I use that during the guide. It also works in the Nintendo 3DS. And last but not least, it works in the new 2DS XL or 3DS consoles. Again, this does work in every device, so as long as you set it up properly and follow this guide. 